A lot of people have been asking me lately about how they can get started with the sort of things that I do, which if you don't know, is animatronics, robotics, biology inspired mechanisms and also putting a bit of an artistic slant on these things. So I will often get messages where people will say to me that they don't have the skills to do what I do. So I'm going to start off with the short answer, the quick start guide. I'm going to talk about the kind of skills and how you can develop those skills. And then finally, I'm going to give you my development process and workflow. So here is the short answer. This is the quickest way to get you started. And this is pretty much exactly what I did to start in animatronics. So you want to get an Arduino starter kit. Um, I won't recommend you one since you'll all have different things that you want to make um, but it should at least include an Arduino Uno, um, a servo which is a little motor that moves to a position you tell it to and a potentiometer which is an adjustable input. So now you're going to download the Arduino IDE from the Arduino website arduino.cc and you can go to examples servo knob and then on the Arduino website you can find the guide to how you should wire everything up um, I'll leave a link to that in the description and then now you should have a means of controlling the position of something and from this point on you can just add little bits at a time another motor, LEDs, a more complex mechanism and before you know it you'll be making really cool stuff you know a lot of the projects on my channel are actually just kind of developments of this um, like the animatronic eyes for instance is more or less exactly how they work um, just another developed version of this basic Arduino starter sketch. It's kind of a good place to get started with everything I would say. Um, so another thing that I do a lot of is 3D printing. Um, is a really convenient way to quickly design and test mechanisms. So if that's something you want to get into, designing things using CAD software, um, I would recommend you start with something free. Um, the first thing that I used was Google SketchUp. Um, so you can have a look at that and maybe look at some online tutorials and when you're ready to move beyond that I would say that although it has a lot of flaws um, Fusion 360 is really just unbeatable for the price uh, So that's what I use and that's what a lot of people are using nowadays So with that out of the way, I'm going to talk about my thought process and approach to developing a project from a concept to a final piece Now remember there's lots of different ways to skin a cat and this is just what my method generally looks like so usually I have an idea in my head, I'm sure everyone is familiar with this stage at least. You have an idea in your head and you sort of mull it over for a few weeks. Um, you work on random little details in your mind as you go about your day and solutions will hit you at random times. Um, so when I've decided I want to do something, it's really important to do some research. When I was younger I would quite often try and put this off and not want to research anything because I didn't want to be influenced or um, put off by you know or, or, or realize that what I wanted to do isn't actually possible um, so I would avoid researching but it's really important to try and work out what kinds of tools you might need and and build your own expectations so often with exciting projects you will be combining different elements that haven't necessarily been combined before or not in the precise way that you envision um, with my animatronic mouth I looked into professional animatronic mouth designs, homemade and 3D printed designs, and I also looked into speech synthesis, a little bit of linguistics, and I tried to find relatable examples such as video games where a player's mouth moves according to the microphone input. Unless you're an academic researcher or a PhD student, most of what you'll be doing is taking different concepts, technologies and components which have already been completed and remixing them to create something that's better or just different or worse than the sum of its parts. So once you've done your research, you can clearly define your objectives, parameters and restrictions. You'll also need to probably tweak these as you go. You'll continue to learn as you move through the project and you'll have to make alterations to your expectations. I then go on to the conceptualization phase. Generally, I'll make a lot of sketches um, and never worry about the level of detail or dimensions unless they're critical to the design at this stage. Um, but the sketches that you make should be for you only as a way to develop your ideas in your own mind. Um, that's if you're working as an individual, of course. If you're working in a team, you might need to develop your sketching skills in order to help your, your you know, visual communication. But lots of people will like to get a more concrete plan down on paper before moving into CAD software but personally I tend to get on CAD 
quite early. So once I'm in CAD, I'll generally start with the most critical elements, like the moving parts, and then the actuators, although often you'll need to plan both the actuators and moving parts simultaneously. Um, I quite often use GrabCAD to get models of actuators, bearings and whatnot that are um, accurate to the real size of it um, to allow me to spatially plan my design. Um, overall I would say my approach is to work out a rough concept and then use CAD to arrange the elements spatially but it is possible and you might prefer it to work out all the dimensions and spatial details in your sketches before you use the computer. Um, it's entirely down to you. In my design I will generally leave the structural components to last and build it around the moving parts and actuators. By setting up motion links in your CAD software you can ensure there are no collisions between parts. Um, an important point is that you'll often be working with unknowns. Generally the best approach is to use prototypes to frequently try and solve the big unknowns first that other factors will hinge on. So by testing the mechanism before it's finished you can save a lot of time um, having to alter things later on in the design process. This is why a 3D printer is so useful because you can quickly and easily prototype parts of the design as you move through the development process. Some other tips um, on design would be to strongly consider how your part will go together and try to hold the consideration throughout the entire design process. Um, you want to try to design the part, if possible, to be taken apart as easily as it went together. You'll always find problems you didn't anticipate once the thing's fully assembled and you should try and make it as easy as possible to take apart. In general, mechanical fixing methods such as screws are always superior to things like glue. Um, and a final tip I would say, with 3D printing there's an extra dimension because your parts have to be made layer by layer. So you can always ignore this fact and use supports to print complex parts, but you'll get so much more strength out of the parts if you consider which will be the weak planes when it's printed from different orientations. So as an example, if I wanted to make a simple lever um, that was quite narrow um, with some relatively large holes for the size of the lever. If I was to print this part on its side, it would come out super weak, but if I was to print it face down with the holes facing up, the part would be much stronger. Um, an easy way to think of it is to visualize just one layer of the model um, as it's being printed and think about how strong that single layer will be. If you just remember that the strength of one complete layer is always going to be greater than the strength um, in between layers, the bonding strength between layers, no matter how well your print is set up, you can consider how to make your parts stronger. So now I'm just going to talk a little bit about resources and skills. So most of the skills you'll use are actually developed through experience, trial and error and failures, but there are some things that you can develop early on um, to give you a bit of a head start. So the skills that you will need for animatronics, robotics, all the kind of stuff that I have on my channel is number one, mechanical design with sketching and or CAD. Um, number two, prototyping slash manufacture, um, which generally entails 3D printing for me, but it could include machining, cutting out cardboard, whatever it is to actually bring your idea into the real world, you know, that's manufacture. Um, programming, Arduino will suffice for almost everything I do. Um, the programming language of Arduino is specific to the Arduino IDE, but if you know C++, you'll get on fine with Arduino. Number four, electronics will be useful to know. Um, and number five, if we're talking strictly animatronics, artistic flair. So of course, some of those five things that I listed are things that can't really be taught. Um, but programming is something that you will need to learn semi-formally, by which I mean you can't teach it to yourself through trial and error, at least not at first. Um, I started out with programming by looking at the Arduino example scripts and just reading through them, trying to make sure I understood every line and what its purpose is. Um, and then I did an online course in C++ to try and get a better understanding. And I would say that's helped form a good foundation for my programming knowledge. Um, even though I'm not great at programming. There are lots of online courses out there. Um, I, I don't really sit through full online courses to try and learn new skills. Um, 
generally I just kind of scrape together enough knowledge to start a project and then use various YouTube videos and forum posts and stuff to try and work out the specific problems that I'm having. But if you want to develop lasting, mature skills, it's probably best to look around the internet, maybe use something like Skillshare, maybe find some other online courses and try to learn the subject from the first principles. Um, but in order to master a skill, you do have to use it have original ideas, test things and mess about. Now I guess really the most important skill out of those five is the design, conceptualization and ideation of mechanical designs. Um, now of course there are engineering principles that you need to know, especially when it comes to refine and optimize the design, but a lot of the skills you need are down to visualization, spatial thinking and even trial and error. Um, it's difficult to teach and even on my university course which was mechanical engineering the approach was to give you opportunities to learn yourself when it came to actually developing mechanical solutions but I do have some tips to help you become a better mechanical designer um, my tips would be to learn by doing first of all you will just need to learn in a hands-on way that's the only way to learn it really um, don't be afraid whatever idea comes into your mind don't be afraid to try and design it you know just practice often that's you know the best way to learn two you will need to look into mechanical engineering to get some ideas of the principles you'll need to know about um, and you can find all this information on the internet for free the advantage of doing a, a degree in mechanical engineering would be to get a formal job as an engineer and be qualified for that role but if you just want to design things for fun um, you know you can get all the information on the internet for free another thing that I think has really uh, made me a better designer um, is that as I've done more and more designing I have become increasingly fascinated by very sort of mundane examples of engineering um, so you know when you're turned on to it um, you'll start noticing good examples of engineering everywhere you look and I think when you notice things out in the real world um, the, the little concepts and solutions sort of sink into your subconscious and they pop back into your brain at unpredictable times and help you solve issues you're having um, so you know you can find wonderful examples of engineering everywhere you look you know it's not all about spaceships and F1 cars so in closing I just want to say um, I want to use my videos to inspire you to make your own stuff, you know what I mean? I would hope that's what um, people get from my videos. I would hope that you look at them and think, oh wow, you know, that guy's doing it with, you know, cheap stuff off Amazon, then I can do it or I can do a better job because there's people out there that are far, far smarter than me and, you know, a lot of people, the only thing that's stopping them is their um, self-belief or the motivation so don't let a lack of knowledge or a lack of skills stop you from starting a project you know just get stuck in just get going with it and you'll eventually figure it out with enough time and motivation I do also recognize that money and budget will be a big factor for some people um, I live in the Western world where you know I can take for granted Amazon Prime and stuff like that you know I can get parts pretty cheaply and quickly um, and I also really take for granted the fact that I have a 3D printer which you know a few years ago would have been super expensive now is relatively cheap but still potentially out of the price range of a lot of people who want to get into engineering and design so I understand that that is a, a major factor and I'm not too sure on what I can you know do to help you with that but I would say that if you can get the Arduino starter kit you know, you can get a microcontroller, a servo, and a potentiometer. You can start doing robotics, I think. So I really hope that my video is never as seen as exclusionary. I would like for what I'm doing to be as accessible as possible. All I really want to do is to encourage people to start making stuff. And then once you've made it, share it with as many people as you can. Um, I was thinking actually about the possibility of maybe making some kind of discussion platform because a lot of people message me with their project ideas and a lot of the time I wish I could give them more attention but if I could find some way to encourage people to uh, you know get these things out in the open um, around other skilled and knowledgeable people then, then maybe we could all make better stuff um, with a more 
community spirit so I'm not sure about it yet I was thinking maybe a forum potentially a subreddit it's just an idea so if anyone has any thoughts on it let me know I've also been working on my biomimetic bionic hand project I'd, I'd love to have a way to make it more open source and collaborative YouTube's not a good place for discussion okay so thank you everybody for watching this video thank you particularly to my patrons wonderful generous people helping me through this hard time that we're all going through so massive thank you to all my patrons the next video is going to be about programming my animatronic mouth um, so that should be interesting a little bit of a diversion from my mostly mechanical videos um, so i hope you'll enjoy that uh, i'll see you in the next video